What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally, literally does not work. Um, wow. Wow. You know, um, Micah Parsons, 11 from heaven, as he used to be called, from one Skip Bayless, who since has gotten off of the bandwagon of Micah Parsons. I don't know. Actually, I, 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 quite frankly, I don't think I've actually heard anything from Skip Bayless since that whole tirade and, and, and Twitter war with Micah Parsons. But a lot of people have been on the um, Micah Parsons trash him, you know. I literally had people say they should trade Micah Parsons because he's doing his podcast. And I'm actually, you know, you had, of course, Bart Scott, you know, the scholar that he is, who has trashed Micah Parsons when Micah was basically saying, see, this is how they twist it. You know, they, they literally twist things around. What they do is, oh, I say it, I say it again, you've been had. You've been took. You've been hoodwinked. Bamboozled. Let us stray. Run on muck. This is what he does. This is what he does. Um, that Micah Parsons is a big baby. He needs to stay off of social media. He needs to stop doing his podcast. Um, I'm coming to the realization that this is, I mean, look, I'm a construction. How, how can I say Micah Parsons shouldn't do a podcast when I, you know, build houses, I'm a construction worker and things like that. Hey, you know, if I can go ahead and do it, why can't he? This is not my day job. This is side hustle. So how can I say that about Micah Parsons? And I dare say there has been, I, I, I haven't been crazy about it. I mean, I'm going through this kicking and screaming. Um, but it has been some good things that have come out of this. He has been able to put the NFL on notice when they've had things that have been injustices that are going on. Calling out with the lack of calls of things being fair and balanced and stuff um, and so forth. And even after losing in the Green Bay game, getting CeeDee Lamb to own up to his need to grow up and things. And putting Stephen A. Smith, you know, kind of putting things into perspective of, you know, Stephen A., you're full of shit. Okay? So there are some good things that have been working that have been actually good. But still, people look at it and say, that's the damn Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys, they carry, you know, worry more about their brand and being America's team and everything else that they need to just, lo and behold, focus on football. In fact, we even had one of our own reality star slash football player, Jesse Holly, who literally threw Micah Parsons under the, the bus and said he was lazy because he wasn't learning how to play um, two positions because he was you know, just settling to be an edge rusher as opposed to being a great linebacker. And so, of course, the Cowboys are the only ones out here to do things like this. But lo and behold, social media, wow. I can't believe this. Because this is, let me... So I'm sprinting over. Let me show you something here. This isn't new either. This is not new. Take a look at this. Like, oh my goodness. And then I see CD kind of come underneath. I'm like, oh, I, I got to flip around. So as soon as I'm flipping around, I see Dag already threw the ball. And so I'm running over to where he threw the ball. Demo deflects the pass. And when you talk about just a perfect little, little basket of love. <laughs> Warner House. 
Yeah. So. Yeah. This is one of those things where when the Cowboys do something, it's the worst thing in the world. Other people do it. Nobody talks about it. You know, we're told if only, you know, Micah Parsons was like Fred Warner, you know, because Fred Warner is an outstanding linebacker. Without looking and saying, Fred Warner had Greenlaw right there beside him, okay, right? That's two outstanding linebackers. End of the season, how many outstanding linebackers did we have? And understanding that he had Armstead, Hargrove, Chase Young, Randy Gregory, and uh, uh, Bosa out there in front of him. Yeah. Pot, meat, kettle. The Warner House. Yeah. So I doubt that this will squash the calling for Micah Parsons to end doing his podcast. Because I see over on Twitter that you got people that are literally just saying trade Micah Parsons because he's got his podcast. And he doesn't care about football that, you know, we're hearing that he's a crybaby and complains too much and stuff. They're just mad because they're not as successful as Micah Parsons is with what he does. Hmm. Very, very interesting to say the least. But um, I'm going to say right now, right now, Micah Parsons opening up and saying that I'm talking to Jerry, that we recognize that I can't do it on my own, that I need these pieces, and putting it out there for Cowboy fans to keep the pressure on Jerry Jones, to try and squash some of this hatred. Because, see, you know, it's kind of like when you're married. I keep trying to tell my wife this. But this is one of those things that a little praise goes a long way. It motivates me because then I want to get some more of it as opposed to always just crap. And we as Cowboy fans, all we do is just keep giving them crap. You know, let's see if we can keep the pressure on. Jerry Jones, and let people know that, you know, Dak Prescott, he can be better. He can be better. But we need to have the people right there that can also be better, too, if we're going to be in this thing to try and win this thing. All righty, good people. I hope you are having a great, great evening. I am. It's about 9.30. I'm going to be doing my fireside chat, and I'm going to go to bed with my lovely bride, and God willing, I'll wake up in the morning. Peace.